How's it going everyone? Mitch here with part 3 of the Native Logic Plugin Overview Tutorials. We are going to be starting in Channel EQ today, so let's get right into it. Uh, channel EQ is a multi-band equalizer. Like I said in one of my previous tutorials, the Channel EQ and Compression are one of the two or are the, the two biggest plugins that you need to learn when you're learning how to mix and master. They can change a signal from decent to great uh, with just those two plugins. So this is something that you need to learn, uh, I would say, probably first, and uh, then you can continue with compression. It includes a high and low pass filter and high and low shelving filter on either side, as well as a few mid-band um, uh, filters as well. It allows you to see the frequency curve as you edit in real time. This is nice so that you can visualize, visually see how you're manipulating the signal across the frequency domain. And also it's used, like I've said, in almost every single track, also in mastering, and then even um, your bust out subgroups. Uh, that I find myself using these a lot in as well. So you see a lot of channel EQ, so very, very important plugin to learn. Next is going to be the Fat EQ. It's yet another multiband equalizer. It's from the name of bigger and fatter tone so that you can use it in mastering or on individual tracks as you like. The only downside to this is it's not as lean on the CPU compared to that channel EQ. There's less filters and no real-time analyzer. So you take a hit on the amount of amenities or the things that you can do with it compared to that channel EQ, but you do get a little bit of a fatter tone. I honestly don't find myself using this as much as that channel EQ, <clears throat> but if you are working on a track that uh, you do want to make a little bit fatter, I don't know, maybe try some fat EQ on it. Next is going to be the DJ EQ and Silver EQ. They're just simplified equalizers. Uh, like I said, the Silver EQ is just a simplified version of its counterpart, which is the channel EQ. DJ EQ only has a high and low pass shelves on it, and then the Silver EQ adds that low and high frequency. It's great for learning, and it's also great for automation. You can have a channel EQ on your, <laughs> on your track, but then you can also easily automate these very few parameters in these plugins so that you can get that nice automation effect while still preserving that channel EQ on your track. Next is going to be the Linear Phase EQ. It looks exactly like channel EQ, but it also has signal phase preservation. Now, there's a lot of talk between linear phase EQ or channel EQ. Let's explain what it, it, what it exactly does here first. Channel EQ can affect the modulation of a chord because the signal phase is smeared across the frequencies. This is good because it gives the track character, but if you want to preserve the phase of a signal, a signal that might be already very highly processed, uh, you might want to look into using the linear phase EQ. But honestly, I almost never use a linear phase EQ. I find the channel EQ is fine. It gives it that extra character, exactly what you're going for. Next is going to be the match EQ. It's a fingerprint EQ. Imagine you're recording a video outside and you have this interesting uh, sound quality uh, on your vocals. You, you go into your studio and you start um, producing this, editing it, you know, uh, editing the video, but you want to do overdubs for certain parts because the audio isn't very good. But the recorded audio in the studio versus outside of the studio is completely different. With this, you can analyze a track that was, uh, analyze an audio track outside, say, for example, and then you can find that EQ associated with it, and then you can put it on the overdubbed EQ, or overdubbed track and make it sound pretty close to what it was originally outside. It stores the average frequency spectrum of an audio file as a template, then it can be applied to other tracks. This is great for overdubs in video so that you can make it sound like the rest of the video. Um, I don't really use this because I don't do a ton of video editing, especially with audio inside of Logic, but this is very applicable to this kind of uh, video production, just in general. So, um, Here are a lot of plugins. They're just going to be breakouts of that channel EQ, just like I said, extracted from the channel EQ, and you can automate these single 
band EQs instead of the channel EQ for that preservation of that channel EQ. Just like in the Silver and DJ EQs, you can automate these instead of that channel EQ to preserve it. Um, again, you might and you can just automate the channel EQ, but uh, for preservation's sake, you might want to look into this. Next is going to be the auto filter. It's an analog style synth effects filter. There's a lot of things that could be edited here and, and manipulated in this plugin, and it's it's kind of interesting to work with. But it contains an ADSR envelope or LFO, attack, decay, sustain, and release envelope. And you can do a filter overdrive, it's just built into it, and you can fine tune the tonal character of the signal with the filter section of that auto filter. And an interesting application of this is that you can wobble any signal passing through it, almost like uh, you can get, you can almost create that wobble, that dubstep wobble, out of any track, say a vocal track, or any synthesizer that doesn't have that LFO built into it, you can wobble with this filter. It's very nice and I have a tutorial over that if you'd like to check that out. Next is going to be the Evoc 20 filter bank. It's a modulated filtering effect. Keep that in mind, modulated filtering effect. This plugin is very hard to uh, understand and it's I mean, it's just, there's just a lot of going on, um, but in the end, it's just that modulated filtering effect. It includes dual format filter banks. Filter banks are, are basically the core of a vocoder. If you don't know what a vocoder is, it basically takes a signal and can overlay it onto another one. That's just a very simple def definition of it, but I would suggest going and looking up a vocoder if you don't. It's found in a lot of electronic songs for vocals and such. So, um, And then also it can crossfade between the dual format filter banks inside of it. So uh, check out that uh, vocoder. Speaking of vocoder, the Evoc 20 Track Oscillator. It's a vocoder with a monophonic pitch tracking oscillator. And it uses a filter bank at its core. So it uses that previous plugin that I was talking about at its core. It's a, a source can originate at the track input, just like normal, or it can uh, originate through a sidechain. So you can sidechain a certain signal through it to create um, almost a parallel track uh, with this track oscillator, which is kind of cool. You can use it to add filters to other instruments as well. It's not just used on vocals. Uh, you can create some very interesting effects on uh, just any instrument, guitar, or whatever. All right, um, and then next is going to be the fuzz wah. It's going to be that classic wah effects simulator used on a lot of guitars um, as an actual physical pedal on, on a board or whatever. Um, but this is going to add compression and fuzz to the signal. And like I said, it's just that classic wah-wah sound that uh, is found on a lot of guitars. Okay, so for an actual physical pedal that guitars use, you move it back and forth. The only way you can simulate this inside of Logic is to automate these low and high pass filters to create that wah effect. All right. Uh, next is going to be the spectral gate. It's a filter in the spectral domain. So, so far we've seen the time domain and the frequency domain, never the spectral domain. The spectral domain basically splits the frequency domain into a lot of small frequency bands. And that's basically all it is. In this plugin, it has only high and low frequency ranges. And what you can use this for is cleaning up drums. Uh, I would be wary about using this because you can uh, get a lot of interesting and not great effects on your drums at the cost of cleaning them up. So be careful with that. Or you could just create a lot of futuristic sounds out of this for your vocals, for your synthesizers, etc. A lot of different things you can do with this spectral gate. So everyone, I think I'm going to be cutting it off there for part three. Thank you everyone for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe. Um, hopefully I will be finish, finishing up this tutorial series very quickly so I can get some others out. I want to get through this as fast as I can. Again, thanks for watching everyone.